Hi, welcome back to my sewing studio. I'm Connie Koch, and this is part two of our military mess dress shirt restyle. Today's focus will be taking all of those pieces we so patiently and carefully seam ripped off our mess dress shirt. So that will be your sleeve, your placket, and the back if you chose to do the back portion as well. We're going to be preparing those to lay out on our fun fabrics. We will be pinning and cutting those pieces out. And lastly, we will be sewing your brand new back piece to the back of your mess dress shirt. I'm so excited, so let's get started. These are our tools we'll be using for today's projects. You will want a good pair of fabric scissors, a pencil for marking, a seam gauge for measuring, that seam allowance, as well as pins or pattern weights. As you can see, I marked where my stitching line was, where I seam ripped it all out. I will be measuring with my seam gauge from that stitching line to the very edge of the fabric and that is what's going to get me my seam allowance when I go back to put this all back together. As I'm measuring, I'm measuring at 3 8 Now I'll tell you Every shirt's going to be different, so don't just assume if you do multiples of these that it will be a 3 8 But my guess it will probably be between a 3 8 to a half an inch. But that will make a huge difference. I am not going to do a half an inch seam allowance and round up. I am actually going to make sure that I know exactly where my 3 8 seam guide is on my sewing machine when I sew this back together. So after you get that, you need to take your sleeve. This is my sleeve pattern piece now. And you have a little bit of a pleat at the bottom where your cuff goes. I have that folded. I'm taking my pencil and I'm drawing the line. One at where you see the first edge as it's folded, then where this meets that edge. So when I pull it apart, you see exactly a line here, a line here. These are the marks I need to fold that back together to get my pleat for your cuff. But I need this here, this is very important, when you go to iron it to have these marks. So you'll know exactly what you're doing when you're putting this all back together. Always pay attention when you're seam ripping on how it's put together and in what order. So now I'm going to take all my pattern pieces to the ironing board and I'll be pressing this all out so it's nice and flat okay nice and flat so I can lay it out on my fabrics I will be taking the sleeve the back and the placket let's talk fabrics I have my pieces all ironed out and before I lay my pieces onto my yardage of fabric, I want to share a little bit about how we want to lay that out. You do have a top and a bottom of your pattern pieces, and you can tell that the top of the sleeve, the bottom of the sleeve, the top of the back, the bottom of the back. That all has to go on grain line. What's grain line? That's so confusing when you're not into the sewing world took me a while to learn all that and ask me how I know. I had some pretty crazy garments I was wearing. But if you notice, my husband chose 
our beloved Seahawk fabric for his fun fabric. So all fabrics and yardage will have what's called a salvage edge. This is your factory edge. There's two of them, okay? My two are placed together and my fabric is folded in half. When I lay my sleeve out, you'll notice this fabric will be folded in half. When I lay my back out, I only need one piece. I'll be opening this up and laying it out singly. The other side is the fold. Now, I have an in. I have directional fabric. If you get anything with directional fabric, you can't just put your pattern pieces any which way. You will have to have the top of your sleeve, the top of your back, all going the same direction. Of course you want to read it so you're going to have your top up here where it's the top of the fabric. If you have any other crazy fabrics that do not have a directional fabric then it's okay. However, you still need to utilize your grain line. A grain line means you have a cross grain and a straight -a grain. I will not lay my pattern piece horizontally. I will lay it vertically, parallel to the salvage. Okay, the reason being, if you want to know, I'll give you a little bit of a hint, is it's going around our body and cross grain is horizontal. And if you notice, see how that actually stretches? And that's a good thing. Cotton fabric does stretch a little bit, okay, for the cross grain. We want that going around our arms and around our body. And if you do straight a grain, which is vertical, parallel to that salvage, if you notice, it's not really stretching. It really isn't compared to this. It has a little bit of a stretch, but this really stretches. This doesn't. So there's your little tip and your little tidbit for when we go lay out our fabrics. It makes a huge difference. I hope that helps. So when we get back, you're gonna see my pieces all pinned to the fabric. And then we're Now that we've cut everything out, it's time to start working on our back piece. First of all, we need to hem while it's still in a piece and not attached to our back. So let's get started with that. Okay, what I did was I measured the hem from the stitching point to the edge and it measured out to be a 5 8 seam allowance. So what I did prior to this, as you see, it's nicely folded and pressed. I, when I was at my ironing board, I measured all the way up, so I halved this to 5 8 all the way around. That was my first pressing. So I pressed all the way at a 5 8 seam allowance. Then I took it and I opened it up, and if you notice, I pressed this little edge over to finish it clean. Then I folded that all over and pressed again and that is going to give me the hem that I want. That is pretty much reminiscent of the hem that was there on the white piece. I also noticed when I took apart this back piece the hem that was from the front to the back wasn't one continuous. It actually was pieced like this and hemmed separately. So that's exactly how I'm gonna be doing this. It'll be a lot easier hemming like this versus all the way back around and taking out that whole entire hem. So let's get started and sew this up. I know it says top stitching, but it's a lot easier sometimes to top stitch from the side you can see and I will be really making that right at the edge and then you'll see it from the back. Now since this is gray material I could use 
a gray stitching, but the front, remember, is white. So I am going to use white so it blend, the hem all blends in. Really makes no difference because the shirt's tucked in, but that's just me. Use whatever thread you choose to use on both of your pieces. So now I'm going to actually, since it's all pressed and folded, I don't have to, but I am going to put a couple pins in here just to help me keep it together. If you press it really well, you don't need pins all the way around. I will be taking these out prior to the needle hitting them, but I just want to make sure that my pressing stays where it's supposed to be. As you can see, I have my needle in the down position. I have made it so I put my needle right here at this edge and it almost looks like my edge of my folded fabric is right by the presser foot. All machines are going to be different, so you adjust your machine accordingly to get that perfect stitching. And let's start stitching our hem up. Always remember to make a locking stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, now we got our hem all done. I did do a quick press on the hem. I always, after I do a stitch, I always go to my pressing station and press that um, seam or hem or anything. It just gives it a nice finished look and it's a great habit to get into. So now we want to put the back piece top back onto the yoke. So after seam ripping this, I noticed that it was just one stitching, top stitching, and it was sandwiched in these two layers, okay? This is actually the inside with your label, and this is the outside, um, what's gonna show. So, I'm going to use a little trick called um, either wash away wonder tape as a sticky back tape to kind of lay my back in there so it doesn't slip because I think pinning may just not be a good idea for this. You can use maybe a hint of glue, just um, like almost like the Elmer's type stick glue. Don't use anything liquidy. Um, I just don't want it to seep through the white. So if you notice, as I'm sandwiching this, it only lays, there's like a uh, three-eighths of an inch fold up on both sides and I'm laying my back edge directly onto that and this will go exactly edge to edge there and that's how you want to do it. Once it's all together then I will flip it over to the right side. Now remember you want the back of your fabric to be upright with your inside which is your label side. You don't want it like this, or you'll have it inside out back. A suggestion again would be your wash away wonder tape is a double stick back tape, or there is actually, you can get it in a quarter inch or a eighth of an inch width, double sided fusible tape. A brand name is Steam Seam. I think Pellon makes a double-sided fusible tape so either one of those will be your sewing room's best friend for a lot of applications including this right here so let's go top stitch Okay, we are on the finishing lap of getting this back connected. So obviously, 
we sewed the back piece onto the yoke and now we just need to sew back up both side seams so it's all attached and I like to pin one end when I'm doing this and putting things back together and the other end and then I'll pin in the middle. Yes, I do like my pins and yes, I do pin because I feel like I have more control. Um, so you do what you, feels comfortable for you. So I'm just pinning this up. I'll pin both sides. Then I'll go sew it at the 3 8 inch seam so it's pinned just like this there's the back there's the front and it's all going to be put together and if you look at it this way it gives us the armhole so we can reattach the sleeves when we get to that point so you saw me top stitch and do my hem I'm not going to show the sewing part for this. I'm going to just sew up what I measured it at with a 3 8 seam allowance on both sides. Then my finishing, since we took serger stitches out, I do have a serger and I will be finishing off the side seams and any other seams to be finished off with my serger. However, if you do not have one of those, use your zigzag stitch that will work just as well just make sure it gets really right to the edge and so it actually helps cut on see all the fraying you'll notice when you take this apart um, it'll start fraying on you so it just helps keep those seams nice from washings to washings and you don't have anything fraying on you oh my gosh we're done for today can you believe it that was fun actually I love to see how it is taking shape so if you notice our whole entire back is on completed and if you look on the side here it's the side seams are all nice and done and so if you turn it around all you see is white pretty cool right till we get the sleeves on so I'll flip him around again so you can see how fun the back went on the hem's done, piece of cake. I did serge. I'll turn it around this way for you. I did serge the side seams, okay? And when you press this, you will press to the back side to the back side you want that all pressed and i actually did because that's how it was done but by the hem i actually tacked just that down so it won't flip flop and it it's not going to um show so next time we'll get the sleeves done and bam you have a restyled military mess dress shirt until next time